I'm beginning recording. Go for it. Okay, cool. So, let's see if I can just share this. Um, yes. So, I think one of the easiest things. Sophie? Um, I'm working. You've gone all darky, Sophie. <laughs> we can't hear you. Yeah. I've, I've disconnected your share because you um, went all darky, Sophie. Hang on. How is it now? Now? Sherry? Yes, we can. Well, we heard that sentence at least. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Did it take 10 minutes to say it? No, it wasn't as bad as sometimes. Okay. You can hear problem. me now. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to start speaking. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, okay. Overview of different kinds of fermentation. Um, one of the easiest ones to do, you don't need anything special is to do a kimchi, which is a lacto-fermentation, um, which is basically vegetables, um, which you have in a brine, a salty water, and they begin to ferment, and that way you unlock a lot of nutrition from the food. So, for example, a typical one is cabbage, and actually that's the way you're going to get the most vitamin C and other vitamins from the cabbage. Um, I wanted to share some pictures, but I'll just explain. You wanna chop up the things finely. You can often add other healing things like uh, chili and ginger. Um, I've just made like a wild green spring uh, kimchi with um, a lot of wild greens as well as white cabbage inside. Um, and basically you want to cut everything fine and you want to submerge it under a brine which should have um, three tablespoons of uh, salt for every liter of water um can you still hear me okay it's not yep. going directly right cool um so yeah that's one technique and then you could leave that in a warm place for about three to five days and then you put it in a cool place for two weeks and then you can eat it you can do that with all kinds of vegetables as you can experiment um, then you can also other fermentations you need something like a special culture so you could do water kefir uh, kombucha both of which are um, cultures that feed on sugars so you typically mix sugar and water and they feed on that and that makes a very healthy natural probiotic drink. Uh, the cool place for how long? For two weeks with the, um, with the kimchi. Uh, you need to leave it at least two weeks to finish the fermentation and then you can eat it. Um, yeah, and the kimchi is also a natural probiotic. So all of these things are like making natural medicine for your digestive system, as well as being tasty. Um, instead of drinking like a beer or like a carbonated drink, you can make your own uh, kombucha and kefir. Um, and then in terms of other kinds of um, Preserving techniques, how much time do we have? Um, there's like sun drying, which is also a really nice way to preserve things if you have um, like herbs and greens and fruits and mushrooms, you can dry them. That's a very simple way. Um, you can also do a lot of preserving in vinegar. I think Rakesh is going to explain how to make apple cider vinegar. And that's also a nice medium for preserving things in. You can preserve like steamed beans in that. You can preserve chilies. You can uh, use that for things that might go a bit soggy if you're going to do a uh, fermentation. So yeah, it's another way that you can preserve things. Um, how much time do we have? Do we have any questions? Yeah, about five, four minutes. Mm-hmm. 
So are there any questions about fermentation? So one of the, the, the key things maybe worth uh, mentioning, Sophie, is about um, the lacto-fermentation process. Mm -hmm. um, of, you know, th there's typically a kind of balance because basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to create an environment where only one particular bacillus, lacto bacillus, can thrive in. And basically, you need to, um, yeah, you create uh, an, an, an alkaline. Yeah, so basically, you're, you're making it very, very salty so that almost nothing else can thrive other than that bacillus, which then converts it and, and, and starts breaking it down. So there's a, there seems to be, you know, different people give you different magic kind of formulas as, in terms of how much salt is the right amount. I don't know, do you have any tips? Uh, the kind of rule of thumb I use is uh, three tablespoons of natural salt for a litre of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anything between one and three seems to be the, the kind of magic number. Um, mm -hmm. So if it's not salty enough, then maybe there's a potential for other uh, bacterias to present themselves and too salty is is really not particularly good for your heart so um, also it doesn't ferment if it's too salty mm -hmm. it actually becomes too alkaline and the process can't start because the first um, set of fermenting um, like the first kind of family of fermenting cultures they actually can't begin if it's too salty so yeah, it, like you said, it's a really fine balance. It's also worth noting that if you don't eat salt for any reason, you can also experiment doing the same kind of fermentation, but using uh, celery seeds because they don't have sodium in, but they have a lot of potassium in, which does the same thing to create that um, right level of alkaline that you can um, start the fermentation process as well. Great. Um, and maybe just we're more or less out of time. Does anyone else have any other questions? Uh, Kai, it's uh, celery seeds to answer the pop-up question. Uh -huh. Cool. And I mean, other ways of um, preserving. Um, okay, so there's the fermentations, but then there's drying. There's preserving in oils, there's preserving in vinegars, there's all kinds of different ways of, of preserving. And you know, the main reason for preserving is that very often when you started to grow your own things, you have such a huge amount of yield of certain things in one go. And then later on in the year, you have nothing. So how do you, so you preserve things so that you can keep that supply of foods going. And, uh, so yeah, so there's all kinds of different different ways in which you can do that. The one thing that I would, and I'd say most of them are very safe. The only one that I would be careful about, meaning I would study it very, very thoroughly before I tried it, is preserving in oil. Because if you don't get it right, you can encourage different types of bacterias in there. I think salmonella being one of them, E. coli, sorry. Uh, is yeah, pathogenic, it's very dangerous. Yeah, so you really need to be careful when you're preserving things in oil. Um, other things, uh, I very often, you know, when people leave uh, stuff behind, if they come to my house, I'll, I'll often preserve them just in sun and some salt. Um, uh, so just put a little bit of salt in, leave it in a jar with the lid, mostly off so that air can exchange put it in the sun and yeah it just uh, kind of naturally ferments you'll see it sucks the juices out of whatever it is the lemons or whatever it is you're trying to do um yeah it's just a really simple way of of, of doing the, the lacto fermentation so okay one more person trying to get in Wonderful. So, all right. So the next subject was, what is the next subject? Is it, um, I don't, I've lost my timetable. 
So the next subject should be making your own healthy health and hygiene products. But should we maybe, as soon as we started talking about vinegar, should we move the vinegar first? Because it's really, really yeah, sure. Let's continue. And then yep. it will give maybe a little bit more time for Sophie to talk about um, other products and, you know, um, and whatnot. So apple cider vinegar, I mean, I'm sure many people are familiar with the health benefits of um, drinking or utilizing apple cider vinegar. And it's so ridiculously easy to make yourself. I don't know how much it costs in a shop. I've never ever bought it. Um, but I, I assume that it's, it's not cheap. Um, because I do grow apples, I typically, um, whenever I'm, uh, so even though I'm happy to eat the core, I'm happy to eat the, the, the skin, etc. But typically what I'll do is I'll make different chutneys and things from the main part of the flesh, just so that I have lots of cores and skins left over, because that's what I then use to make my apple cider vinegar. And it's really, it, it's mind bogglingly simple to make. Uh, basically, you just take the cores, the apple cores and the apple skin, and you put it in water. That's more or less it. So, uh, okay, there's a few other little tricks. Uh, in order to get the fermentation going, it needs to have sugars. So depending on how sweet your um, apples are, you might need to either add some extra sugar or just leave it, um, or in many cases you can, you know, if you've got particularly sweet um, uh, apples, you don't even need to add sugar at all. So if you've got something like, if you've, I don't know, right now, I don't know where you are, but right here around the streets, we've got all the, the crab apples have all fruited and they're all starting to fall off. So they're particularly tart, and so you would not be able to make apple cider vinegar without adding sugar to something like that because it's just too tart um but if you want to start making apple cider vinegar right now then just go around the streets collect all the apples you know the the let's say the these uh you know wild apples these tiny little crab apples and they make great vinegar uh, but you definitely need to add sugar to it um, the other thing is you need to leave it initially somewhere quite warm uh, so that you can see the fermentation process start. So you actually see it starting to bubble. And once it starts to bubble, you can then take the actual uh, pulp out, i.e. all the apple, and you can leave it somewhere warm to continue fermenting until it's the, the consistency that you want it or it's the acidity you want it to be um, apparently it doesn't like being in touch with metals so when you're testing it use like a, a ceramic spoon or I don't know if you have don't have ceramic then maybe plastic I guess would do but don't use metals wooden. wooden is another good option also is that what you said Sophie yep yeah. um, and when you're making it um, I typically make it in glass, a glass jar. Uh, I find as big a glass um, jar as I can. Uh, you do not want to close the lid, but you do want to stop things from falling inside it. So typically I'll get some cheesecloth or something and just put some cheesecloth and or any kind of cotton or something that uh, whatever, just put it on top and that's it. Um, any other tips? Uh, oh, another really important thing. Well, it's, it's not so important in this case because it's quite a quick fermentation process. And especially if you're around all the time. What, one of the problems I have is I'm very rarely in one place long enough to actually do this kind of stuff. So I'll get my apples, I'll stick it in a jar, I'll leave it on top of the fridge, I'll go away for two months. When I come back, I then check if it's worked or not. So I don't have the full time to watch and look and check every time. But if you do have that luxury, then um, 
yeah, then it, it's not so important. But if you're in the same situation as me, where maybe you're not going to see it for a month or two, it's really, really, really important that all of the bits of apple stay below the waterline. So you do not want any bits floating up on top because they will go mouldy and it completely changes your whole, it completely changes everything. So, um, yeah, that's, that's for mint apple cider vinegar in, I mean, it, it's, it's ridiculously simple. Are there any questions on that? There's probably lots and lots and lots of articles online, I guess, if you want to learn more or. Oh, another thing is when you're um, taking your apples, you want to avoid putting anything that is uh, starting to uh, rot. I, if there's an insect or something going in, in, in there, you want to cut bits like that out. Um, if it's severely bruised, you also want to cut those out. Don't put those into your, into your apple cider vinegar stock. Uh, however, if you want to speed things up a little bit, you can leave the apples for a day to start going brown. Uh, so they start oxidizing and then put those in. It's a, it's, it's a nice starter. So you want to take out anything that is rotting, anything that is, um, yeah, that has maggots in it or, or whatever. But um, yeah, but leaving it to go brown and starting to oxidize is actually perfectly okay. Okay, any questions on that? Or there are I... some questions on the conversation. Uh -huh. Sorry, I wasn't, it doesn't pop up for some reason. Why is that? Uh, yes, so, right, hold on, the first one. What do you do to cover apples? I hear they need to always be covered, but they feel something, yeah. So, um, as Belinda says, you put a plate or a bag or um, there, there's lots of different things. So, for example, one little clever trick if you do put a plate on it or something, but you can't keep the plate down, is if you just get a plastic bag or something and just blow into it and then tie it up. So that actually, you know, fills up the space um, and it keeps your plate pushed down. That's one trick. Uh, I guess you could do that even without a plate. Um, yeah, a bag of water, there you go. Uh, bag of water, so water or air or, or whatever. Um, yeah, there's lots of little tricks. If that's for apple cider vinegar, for other things such as the kimchi and the things and the sauerkrauts, sauerkrauts that um, Sophie was talking about, putting a big leaf. So for example, putting a really big cabbage leaf or something on top and then putting a weight on top of that is also very, uh, very useful. Um, it, but again, it depends how you're making your kimchi. You know, not everyone makes them with, yeah, yeah, that, that's a bit of a, a science because the more water that's already in the, whatever it is you're starting with, uh, you don't actually need to add water to it. So if you're starting with something really hard, like a carrot or a, a swede or something, then you probably want to start it with some water uh, because the juices aren't going to flow. Whereas if you're starting with a mooli, um, I don't know what the, English name for muli is daikon this you know daikon radish daikon radish uh that's got so much water in it you really don't need to add anything and with your um cabbages and things that's why people tell you to chop it first and then just you know massage it massage 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 what you're trying to do is break the fiber so it starts to release the juices and so on and so forth so yeah Okay, any more questions on that or should we move on to... Um, Let's move. Sophie, it's over to you. Cool. Also, yeah, just to say about the fermentation, if people are interested, I can share some recipes also for like the two different ways of doing the lacto-fermented vegetables because yeah, there's like Rakesh said, the massage technique and then another technique if you're doing harder vegetables. So would that be useful? Would anyone like to, to see yeah. those recipes? Do you want to maybe share that onto the Facebook event? Yeah. Maybe yeah, I think I'll do that because I've got a lot of different recipes and they're kind of 
yeah good to look at more carefully um okay so for the natural health and hygiene there's again a lot to be said but i'm just going to go over some things um i think the first thing that i can suggest is it's really worth if people have got time now to get a good book about herbal medicine um there's one i can particularly recommend called the new holistic herbal by david hoffman again i'll write that in the event and it's a really practical book looking at how plants um, can heal many different things like a first aid kit to more chronic health problems and very practically how you can get the plants and how you can uh, make your own medicines um, so yeah in that book it covers you know like some of the main techniques are uh, making infusions um, which is like a tea, making tinctures where you're extracting the compounds using alcohol, uh, making salves where you're infusing herbs in oil and then mixing them with a bee or a soy wax um, to make a cream where you can put things like calendula, lavender, St. John's wort, which are healing for the skin. Um, and there's another one here which is not so common, which I just want to share in a bit more detail, which is an oxymel. Um, and an oxymel is a very old herbal technique um, for preserving the juice of fruits. And there are a lot of um, kind of recipes and things you can buy, for example, you know, like um, elderberry. And most of them use a lot of sugar. And if you don't eat sugar, that can be a problem how to preserve it. Um, so the oxymel is great. It's basically two parts of the juice of the fruit you want to preserve. One part apple cider vinegar and one part honey. And what you make is it's a way of preserving it to stop it fermenting. You have the balance between the sweet and the sour of the vinegar and the honey. And you have, I've made, for example, from a sea buckthorn, which is a small orange berry, which is full of a lot of nutrition. Um, and it's a very powerful um, support for the immune system. It's got a lot of vitamin E, vitamin C in it. Um, and with the oxymel, I've preserved it like a whole year until the next harvest. So you basically make this and you have like a tablespoon of it uh, in the morning on an empty stomach. It also works really well with um, elderberries. And it's a really nice technique if you're going to experiment with foraging uh, different berries in the wild or if you've got a forest garden where you might be growing different kinds of plants like aronia that have got kind of slightly weird strange fruits but that have got a lot of medicinal properties yeah, yeah. <laughs> disgusting but healthy I would mix the aronia with something else because it's quite astringent um, so yeah that's a really useful one um, <laughs> Sorry, that's the crossing the button. Um, also, yeah, um, just to go on to the um, apple cider vinegar that Rakesh has already explained how to make. I think, yeah, some of the main uses of that, which are really interesting in terms of aside from using it as vinegar, uh, for drinking, you can have uh, a teaspoon to a tablespoon of that in the morning in warm water which is, helps to clean the body um, and is anti-inflammatory. You can also mix it with baking soda for a lot of different kind of cleaning. You can clean your hair with that. You can clean your house with that. If you mix warm water and vinegar and baking soda, you can clean really a lot of things. I usually use that yeah you can clean your windows and like that i actually don't buy any cleaning products you can basically use that for so many different things um and you don't need to worry that you've got to put gloves on because you're flushing chemicals around your house and it's very cheap um another recipe i'm going to share in full what about baking soda being a finite resource yeah, it's not something that is naturally occurring or we can grow ourselves. It's a mind resource. So I guess on balance, you're going to use a small quantity of it. 
Um, but yeah, maybe compared to some other things, it's going to be um, a lower impact on the environment than buying ready cleaning products. Um, obviously, like the ultimate step is if you're growing your own plants that are rich in saponins, you can also use uh, horse chestnuts to make a natural soap because they have these saponins in them. Um, so yeah, you can go to something very simple, but some of these things are kind of easy because they're standard products you can buy. Uh, I'm gonna share a recipe also in the event because it's a bit long-winded. This is for making your own soap. There are a lot of recipes out there for soap. The one, the thing about this that is interesting is that instead of buying new oil to make your soap, which seems a bit wasteful to take something that could be uh, eaten and to make soap with it, this is actually using recycled oil. So you can get um, sunfire oil that's been used for frying. We got a lot of this oil. You can go around and ask restaurants and places that use the oil. Uh, a lot of them either have to pay to get rid of it, or if they're kind of more dodgy places, they might even be putting it into the water supply. And actually oil is something that's very hard to clean in big quantities from water. Um, so yeah, this again, you need to have some like base mine chemicals. You need caustic soda. Um, yeah, what about the smell? Um, what you do when you have the oil, you actually macerate it. So you heat it with herbs. So we heated it with rosemary or with lavender. Um, and you filter out first the food residue. So basically you get your oil, you filter out the residue, you heat it with the herbs. Separately, you mix your caustic soda with soft water. Um, and that's going to make a chemical reaction. So you need to wear protective clothing for that. Um, again, I'm going to put all the instructions because it's good to read them carefully. Um, because you need to add the soda to the water and not the other way around. And you need to leave it overnight. And then when both are the same temperature the next day, you're going to add the lye, which is the soda water, to the oil. Uh, and then you mix them and it changes color and becomes like a caramel color. And then you pour it into your molds. So they can be like reused plastic containers or you can use a big plastic box from the market lined with plastic and you leave it two weeks to harden. Then you break it out of the mold if it's in a big mold, cut into pieces and then you leave it to dry for two more weeks. Uh, and it's the kind of thing you can make a large batch of and it's really nice then to share with people. We made a lot and then gave it as gifts to a lot of people. Um, and you, then you can also, from that soap, you can grate it, mix it again with some soda and hot water. And then you can make a liquid soap that you can use for your body, your hair or for the washing machine. So with that one soap, again, you can avoid buying a lot of products. How am I doing for time, Rakesh? Okay, uh, theoretically your time is up and I've just checked with Paul, he still would like to do his session. Um, okay. What I suggest is maybe, all right, so that this, this line's gonna uh, disconnect in, in nine minutes time. So maybe at the end of that, it would take maybe 10 minutes and then we'd rejoin again and then we just do some kind of a checkout and if there's any other subjects people want to share uh because i know there's you know like belinda for example who's an amazing herbalist and you know there's there's other people here with some amazing 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 skills and i think ram has some questions about organic seeds as well and yeah. so maybe when um when this dies wait 10 minutes because it takes that time for me for the uh, for Zoom to save the recording, uh, and then we join join back in, and then uh, we can ask all those questions and, and cover some other subjects, and maybe if, uh, and if there's anything else we want to ask Sophie, maybe we can. Or the other option is we just finish this, and then Paul starts his session when we come back. Maybe that's actually a better idea. Yeah, better. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's better because then he's not under pressure to try and finish it in eight minutes. So um, if that's okay with everyone, that, that we, we, we do pool session after the break. Um, that's, that's good.
cool. So, um, yeah, do you want to continue your session, or are there are there more? Are there any questions first of all coming up? Are there any questions about making your own soaps? Yeah, there's soap. I've also got a recipe I can share about toothpaste. Did you did you finish about making the 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 lye and the soap? Oh, uh, I think I went over it generally. Like I said, you kind of don't want to just listen to me for five minutes and then go and make soap. Uh, I'm going to post like the full and detailed instructions um, because yeah, it is a chemical process and you do need to be very careful. The lye water is incredibly alkaline and can burn you. Yep. Um, so yeah, it, it's a chemical process, but afterwards when it finished, obviously the soap is uh, safe and yeah, then it's a very good quality soap. If there are any questions about that, people can ask. Otherwise, yeah, I will put all the instructions in the, in the event. Yeah, sometimes people also say you need to wait at least two or three weeks after uh, making your soap before you even start yes. using it as well. To, yes, for sure. Work. You need to make it. It needs two weeks to harden. Then you need to cut it and then you need to leave it two more weeks to harden properly. Yeah, because there's still some chemistry going on. So um, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it, you can't just make it today and use it. Well, the other way you can, could do it is not to use the, the oils and not to make it solidify and congeal and just use it, you know, uh, as a liquid. As, um, but in that case, you're probably better off using saponins directly from plants, such mm. as the, uh, the goosefoots that we mentioned earlier on. So the red okras and the fat hens and even um probably the the one that probably is easiest to find for most people in central europe is um horse chestnut probably has some of the highest concentration of uh of saponins so okay are there any other questions about anything else we've got maybe we've got five minutes or do you want to carry on if there's no other questions then i'm sure sophie's got tons of other stuff she can introduce no other questions all right do you want to carry on then sophie what other sure i can share recipes? some more recipes um i think another one that's very simple and very nice to make is your own toothpaste um so a good thing to base that on is turmeric because it's naturally antibacterial anti-inflammatory um it's said to also help keep your teeth white um, and it's something that's really easy to get hold of so you can mix that it's often mixed with a natural salt um, again salt is antibacterial it can be abrasive so you don't want to use too much if you have thin or damaged enamel on your teeth um, so you can make a dry mix with turmeric and salt. You can also make it like a paste by mixing some oil. Um, coconut oil is good because it's also antibacterial and it can pull toxins from the mouth. Um, you can also mix um, like a medicinal clay or a drinking clay. So one of these very fine clays you can use instead of the oil to help make a uh, smooth powder. Uh, that becomes like a paste when it's wet. Uh, you can also use ground cloves inside. Again, they're anti-inflammatory and antibacterial. Um, and ginger powder for the same reason. Yeah, so I've been using uh, turmeric and salt for probably the last 30 years. Um, and the first question everyone asks me is, doesn't it make your teeth go yellow? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't seem to. I mean, maybe they are yellow. I don't know. Um, nope. <laughs> but yeah, literally 30 years. Uh, and, and the great thing is you can also gargle with it. Uh, so it helps, you know, the, you know, the throat, for throat infections. And yeah, I mean, I swear by it. I, it's, yeah, it, it's so simple. And uh, the other main, the other really good thing about it is what I notice is if I'm outdoors 
I don't even need water or anything. I can just brush my teeth and just spit whatever I can out. If I've got some water, I can just take one mouthful of water and spit that out. Um, whereas if I'm indoors, it's a mess. I, I have to use, I don't know, half a liter of water just, just to brush my teeth. It's, uh, yeah, but, but it's, yeah. So while you're outdoors, turmeric, salt, very easy. And the traditional uh, recipe in India, um, they also put this thing called fitkiri, which is aluminum sulfate. And I, I don't know why. What I know is that aluminum sulfate helps to purify water in particular. But I don't know why it's added to this. But that, that's a traditional Indian recipe of... Um, yeah of, of toothpaste mm -hmm. okay tip for you rakesh spit into the compost then you don't make yeah. a mess in the sink uh -huh. that's yeah. what i do <laughs> my compost is outside <laughs> oh i have a small compost tub in the kitchen and i spit yeah. into that mm -hmm. yeah that's in the kitchen <laughs> anyway. i have a tiny house so i brush my teeth in the kitchen <laughs> don't have anything else <laughs> Cool. So there's one minute left. Any last questions? Yes, I have a question about the uh, first. Hi, guys. This is my first time with you, I guess. Hello. Call me Amram. Uh, I want to ask about uh, organic seeds and if it, uh, like, what's basically the difference between organic seed and non organic? And like, where we are in Tenerife here, it's mostly like 10 times more expensive to buy the organic one. So I want to check what's your opinion about organic seeds and if it's worth it. So we have 45 Ooh. seconds left. Shall we bring this oh. into the next section after the break? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. I, I get my internet get disconnected, so I didn't hear. Yeah. Um, okay. So basically, we're going to take a break here as soon as this dies, which is in 30 seconds time now. And when we come back, Paul will do his session and then we'll have it open for people like you and everyone else to to just ask whatever questions but we'll definitely okay. make sure we answer yeah that. all right That's so it's going to die in in 20 seconds time so see you soon yes yeah, it, it'll take about 10 minutes for for zoom to to save um save the recording so yeah back in 10 minutes time all right okay. Okay. see you then yeah.